In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, John died with Christ, and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Welcome to you all, both those that are here and also watching on live stream. My name is Father Michael, I'm the pastor here, and I had the privilege of accompanying Father Jack briefly in these last months of his life. You're most welcome here, you honor us. Thank you also to the members of our parish community who, even though they didn't know Father Jack, have come here to honor him today, including members of our clergy and of our sixth grade class. Thank you for being here with us to pray. Let us pray. 
Grant, we pray, O Lord, that the soul of John, your servant and priest, whom you honored with sacred office while he lived in this world, may exalt forever in the glorious home of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of prophet Isaiah. God indeed is my salvation. I am confident and unafraid. For the Lord is my strength and my might, and he has been my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the fountains of salvation, and you will say on that day, give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name. Among the nations make known his deeds, Proclaim how exalted is his name. Sing praise to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exaltation, city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain, for the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give a gift from the spring of life giving water. The victor will inherit these gifts and I shall be his God and he will be my son. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds in the sky, they do not sow or reap, they gather nothing into barns yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are not you more important than they? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single moment to your lifespan? Why are you anxious about clothes? Learn from the way the wildflowers grow. They do not work or spin. But I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was clothed like one of them. If God so clothes the grass of the field, which grows today and is thrown into the oven tomorrow, will he not much more provide for you, O oh, you of little faith? So do not worry and say, what are we to eat? Or what are we to drink? Or what are we to wear? All these things the pagans seek. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them all, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be given you besides. Do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The greatest honor we could give Almighty God is to live gladly because of the knowledge of his love. For those of you who knew Father Couture personally, those are familiar words, and you know exactly why I'm beginning with them. For everyone else, they are the words of Julian of Norwich, a British mystic from about 600 years ago. And they encapsulate the mission of this man that we gather to remember today. 
the messenger of joy. Jillian's point is that the way we give back to God for all that he has given us is to live lives filled with joy, knowing that he loves us. For Father Couture, that quote and that idea became a consuming passion of his ministry, one that was actually confirmed by Pope St. John Paul II, who having met Father Couture, commissioned him, so to speak, go, be a messenger of joy. But of course we know that idea doesn't begin with Father Couture, it doesn't begin with Julian of Norwich, it is the gospel. As Jesus says in the Gospel of John, these things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. This is Jesus' own statement about why he came. And Father Couture was seized with the conviction that that was true and that it was the message that people of our times needed to hear. This is part of why we heard that beautiful reading from the prophet Isaiah. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Speaking to the truth that this living water, which is of course a sign of Christ, a sign of baptism, when it bubbles up within us, if it's allowed to do what it's meant to do, will produce joy. That's the basis of the confidence also that we hear in the gospel. Why worry about all these things? Don't you realize that your heavenly Father cares for you? And so seek first his kingdom, and all the rest will be added besides. That message and the example of Father Couture's life is a reminder of a truth that I've often tried to share in speaking of my own vocation. The conviction that if we find what God has made us for, and live it passionately, it will lead to the fullest possible life. And this is certainly what we see in Father Couture's life. He was ordained, listen to this, May 28, 1960, which means that we're just a little over a month shy of 62 years of priesthood. And in those 62 years of priesthood, as far as I can tell, he did just about everything. He was a pastor. He was an administrator. He was a judge. And above all, he was a communicator of the message of joy. As a young man, Father Couture nourished dreams of going into journalism. And as often happens in the course of following God, God asks us, it seems, to give something up. And so I imagine when he entered the seminary, it would have seemed those dreams were behind him. Not so in the plan of God. Instead, as a priest, he was called into the ministry of communication, preaching the gospel in writing, in books, in retreats, and for many years nationally on television. A future I'm sure he never could have imagined for himself when he said yes to God those years before. But God in his goodness, when he asks us to sacrifice something for his kingdom, usually ends up just giving it back in a better and unexpected form. This is what we hear, actually, in the Gospel of Matthew. St. Peter, speaking to Jesus, wonders about this. He says, Lord, what about us who have left behind everything, possessions, family, for your sake? What will there be for us? And Jesus tells him, everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or fields for the sake of my name will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. This is the promise that we hold to in this moment, that Father Couture in his rich life 
gave himself to the Lord wholeheartedly as a priest and as his servant, following where the Lord led. Which means we may hope now that he gets it all back a hundredfold with eternal life. Learning about his life as I was privileged to do in these last four or five months that it's been has brought to mind one of my own favorite sayings from St. John Henry Newman. It's part of a longer poem, but he says this, God has created me to do him some definite service. He has committed some work to me which he has not committed to another. And then it concludes, I shall be an angel of peace, a preacher of truth in my own place, if I do but keep his commandments and serve him in my calling. Having the privilege of getting to know Father Couture only at the end of his priesthood, I could see the fruit of a life lived that way. The conviction that God had created him for some definite purpose. And that by living out his vocation, by being faithful to the calling in front of him, he had fulfilled that purpose. For these last many years, Father Jack has served God in his calling. And now God calls him back. And so today we pray that God who began the good work in him those many years ago, will bring it to fulfillment. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. In baptism, Father Jack received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our brother was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our prayer. Our brother shared in the priesthood of Jesus Christ, leading God's people in prayer and worship. Count him among all holy men and women who sing in your courts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Father Jack seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our our prayer. prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our our prayer. prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ, and grant them a place in the kingdom, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept Christ in your hands. For the praise of the Lord in his name. For our good and the good of all his church. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that through these holy mysteries, John, your servant and priest, may behold with clarity forever what he faithfully ministered here through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael the Archangel, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. Your servant Francis, our Pope, and Luis Rafael, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant John, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you other passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom and the power, power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we implore your kindness, O God, for John, your servant and priest, that as you made him a steward of your mysteries on earth, so you may bring him to be nourished by their truth and reality as unveiled in heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Following the conclusion of the Mass, there will be a reception in the parish center. You're invited. It's the next building over if you go out the side exit that way. And then after about an hour or so, around 1 o'clock, the procession will head to Our Lady of Guadalupe in Newton Grove for the burial. So please do stop over for the reception and at least have the opportunity to greet one another. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for John, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see him again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother John in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon John in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. Mm -hmm. 